यथाग्निर्दाहिकाशक्ति राम कृष्णे स्थिताहियाम सर्वविद्यास्वरूपाम ताम शारदाम प्रणमाम यहम प्रणाम्स तू द सन्यासस्य नमस्ते एवरीवन सो वी आर सेलिब्रेटिंग जी ट्वेंटी वसुदाई वकुटुंबकम the most important thing is that there is this women sharda devi who said no one is stranger in the world the whole world is yours she lived what is vasudeva kutumbakam she gave us the ancient traditional dasanami sampradaya for female and everyone with her orders was established the first Hindu temple in San Francisco in the West. That was the first Hindu temple of the Western country. Swami Trigunathi and Titananda Ji Maharaj took her orders to establish the center. And the second center was Vedanta Temple, the Hollywood Temple. Even before the hills or the region was named as Hollywood, we had a temple dedicated to Sri Ram Krishna, Sharda Devi. and this space accommodated people with different sexual orientation gender identity expression and sex characteristics when they were persecuted by nazi germany they fled these places like europe and in britain britain was worst they compelled alan turing to commit suicide alan turing without alan turing second world war could have not came to an end if hitler is bad those people who killed hitler is equally bad too and in their countries this person called dr michael lawrence dillon who was assigned as female at birth fled to bharat and she was literally seeing what is happening to tibet in you know and she happened to be at least 15 to 20 years elder to dalai lama and she wanted to become a sanyasi and went to ladakh and the ladakhi monks especially from the vajrayana buddhist tradition the born vajrayana tradition ordained her as the ordained her as a monk and she become he that's lopsang jeevaka dr michael lawrence dillon become lopsang jeevaka that person happened to be the contemporary uh, world's first trans men who laid down the protocol medical protocols for trans men surgeries not trans women but trans men that is female to um, man's surgery and going back to hollywood vedanta society uh, even before the stone wall riots or anything you know starts in america and the word lgbt was popular uh, we have this particular space our hindu space which is protecting these people so the most important thing is that coming back to our culture female consent people think okay it is because of draupadi mahabharata took place like that but we see it in a different way every every single character every whether it is small or big or whatever every single character which is part of uh, shri mahabharat it is important for example we have this three sisters without their consent devrath is taking these girls for his step brother's wedding and there is this girl saying that no i am already in love with shalvaraj and why do you do this and i want to go back and this girl goes back but the shalvaraj couldn't accept her and she comes back to devrath who is bishma and bishma is saying that i can't marry you because i already gave a vow that promise that you know i will remain as a single man and i'll remain like this but she is not accepting this and she felt humiliated and with her determination vairagya and sankalpa 
she want to prove that what this man did to her without her consent is wrong and she is taking next birth a draupadi's sister in the early days and she becomes draupadi brother in the later day who is shikandi shikandi was assigned as female at birth and raised as a man or raised as a male moreover because shikandi's identity is more like an intersex identity shikandi is with diverse sex characteristics shikandi is not a transgender person so before getting into this topic i just want to give a brief explanation about what is sogi sc s o g i e s c instead of the word lgbt we are using the word sogi sc that is sexual orientation gender identity expression and sex characteristics the word lgbt comes with a global economy where certain vested interests in certain countries are weaponizing this cause so instead of that we want to or we prefer to use we in the sense the community who stick to the indigenous identities around asia pacific africa and latin and native american countries prefer the term sogi sc that is sexual orientation gender identity expression and sex characteristics so sex is common to all the species in the world like every single species we see have sex identity that is male female and another identity is intersex so when a male when an infant is assigned with uh, when an infant is assigned as male that infant is with the so called male like reproductive system when an infant is assigned as female the female they kind of assign it because the female infant is with the stereotypical female like reproductive system so there are infants whose reproductive system you cannot classify either as male or female so these infants we call them as intersex the term intersex become popular in 2008 not even in medical community even now they use this um so by birth an infant can be assigned as male female or intersex whereas gender identity it's a newly evolving concept gender is a social construct in our ancient texts we find accommodation for sex the approved sex even the constitution of india only recognizes the term sex or it only includes the term sex but what happened suddenly after 1969 because the registration of birth and death act in india 1969 only uh, you know register the sex as male or female but in india we haven't legally defines define what constitutes a male and female but our supreme court went on to define uh, you know transgender persons a third gender person uh, and we don't know where they are deriving their uh, prima facie for the word gender it's again from the constitution the word sex but that is wrong and based on that judgment a lot of flawed policies were framed in the midst of that we have this present regime during this amrit amrit kal during that time you know wrongs have been tried to corrected and we are still working on it because uh, the most important thing here is that um we need to understand that sex identity is different gender identity is different sexual orientation is different sexual orientation has more to do with the romantic emotional uh, physical attraction of a person whereas gender identity we have man woman for example we call a dog or cat as a male cat or a female cat or a male dog or a female dog we don't call them as a man dog women dog female um, man cat women cat not like that so only to human being sex is specific but because we don't know that many g20 countries interchangeably use the option of sex and gender together but our constitution of india it's one of the most inclusive constitution in the world but our constitution is more inclusive but we rarely enact our constitution in our you know work that constitution accommodates not only the conscious subjects of the states which is approaching 
the court of justice or anybody who are in need of justice. But the Constitution also accommodates those non-conscious subjects of the states. Our Constitution is the only Constitution in the world which confers the protection for those life forms which even not aware of the... We are living in Bharat. There is this country called Bharat. We have, you know, Reserve Bank of India or we have a centralized agency. There is this untouched tribes of Andaman. They don't know that they are living in Andaman. They don't know that they are called as Senthalis, or they don't know that there is Bharat or anything. But the co Constitution protects them. Our Constitution is created in the manner, even it must protect the non-conscious subjects of the states, that's what the Manu says. And the intersex infants are the non-conscious subjects of not just India, but all the G20 countries. And the UNHRC states that there are 1.7% of the world population is intersexed. That is bigger than the population of Tamil Nadu itself. So when we put that 1.7% or calculate that 1.7% in Indian population, which will go across at least two and a half crores. So now we are trying to bring our existence. Now we are trying to record our existence as part of the census of this country. In this process, India become the first country in the world to have a legal regime to protect intersex infants through Madras High Court judgment, where Justice uh, G.R. Swaminathan passed a wonderful judgment to protect the non-conscious subject of the state by protecting the bodily integrity of newborn intersex infants and children. So these newborn intersex, and in, in, intersex infants and children are not transgender people. Transgender is a more, transgender persons or transgender the term itself. It's a a uh, term which evolved after 1960s. It's popularized in the late 1980s, and we are using it now. But even before the term intersex, uh, uh, transgender comes into place, we have these native indigenous communities whose gender expression, whose sex characteristics were different. They were accommodated around the globe Bharat is the only country, only space which had temples dedicated for, sacred spaces dedicated for all these communities. For example, in Tamil Nadu, they were known as Arvanis. In Andhra and Kerala, uh, Andhra and Karnataka, they are Jokti Jogappa and Elamas. In Kerala, Bhagavatis. In Kashmir, Kashyapis, in Northeast Nupi Manbis, in Utkal and Banga region, we call them Sakibekis. In Maharashtra or in Uttar Pradesh, Hijras or Kinnar, the term Hijra, even though it is quite new term, I mean, it became popular after the Islamic invasion or the other forms of invasion, especially before 800 years in India. And these traditions need to be protected by the Indian government because these are integral part and intangible assets of India. If our government is not going to protect it, we can't expect the civilizational heritage, a unique civilizational heritage. Can be, it cannot be protected by any other government because it's originating from here. I mean, we are not the center of the world, but, you know, but all the things which are central or like any central elements of any indigenous traditions takes its life force from here. And we need to acknowledge it. And the most important thing is that this Vasudaiva Kutumbakam, the concept or as a philosophy, when we talk about this, we need to be very, very, very conscious because we always think about Vasudeva Kutumbakam as a male and female with our abled bodies. 
Vasudeva Kutumbakam should include everyone because the Bharat and Bharatiya Dharma included everything. When Bharat and Bharatiya Dharma included everything, who are we to exclude certain sections of the society and marginalize them? And in that Vasudeva Kutumbakam, we need to accommodate people with differently abled bodies, differently abled society, you know, uh, skills, as well as people from diverse sex characteristics, gender identity expression. And I'm happy that the present Vasudeva Kutumbakam is giving me a platform. By providing me a platform, the voices of the intersex infants and children are reflected here. For example, the issues of gender non-conforming children are completely different. When they leave their home at the age of 12 or 13, they need to pay at least 3 to 4 lakh rupees, that is around 2,000 to 3,000 dollars as a tax to their senior transgender persons. Once they pay the tax, how they pay the tax? They are indulged in begging and forced prostitution to pay that money. Once they pay that money, they're allowed to undergo this gender-affirming surgery, which was not available before 20 years. And how medically ethical is that particular procedure matters a lot. The ICMR haven't reviewed this process. We don't have any proper study on this. Meanwhile, the surgical procedure, which comes with multi-billion dollars economy, you know, is enforced on this people and they become trans women or trans men in this process. Whereas intersex people don't undergo any surgeries. Like Shikandi, she was assigned as female at birth, but suddenly her physique is changing and her appearance is changing. And so intersex people don't undergo transition mostly. They naturally inhibit the characteristics through, because their chromosomal structure or pattern itself is different. That's, that might not be XX or XY, that might be, or maybe triple X or XYX like that. And we see all this, all this as part of our temple architecture. When you go to the Mathurai Meenakshi temple in the Thousand Pillar Hall, which was renovated or built after 16th century, you see the form of Arjuna as Arjuni with breast and mustache. And these forms are available everywhere. Nobody commissioned, no vested interests commissioned it. And when we go back, we especially through our uh, temple architecture, arts and aesthetics, we need to feel ashamed that how Victorian we are with our values than the uh, British now. <laughs> because the problem here is that the present system need to be decolonized and the present, uh, the present system need to be decolonized. And the decolonization process comes from this land and the decolonization process needs to come from the dharmic lens and anything dharmic is scientific, anything dharmic is inclusive and anything which is not scientific is not dharmic, anything which is not inclusive is not dharmic and that is Vasudeva Kutumbakam and pranams to everyone again, Jai Ma, Vande Mataram, Namaste.